This is a second hand fridge, a second hand washing machine. This is a second hand TV, second hand chairs. Oh, and I got these fans from the street. Believe it or not, you can live cheap in Australia or relatively cheap. In this video, I'll give you lots of tips on how to live on a budget when you are here in Australia. So if you're interested, keep watching. If you want to live cheap in Australia, you first need to set a budget. You just set a limit to the amount of money that you're willing to spend per month, but then you have to stick to that limit. You can't exceed it. Now that you have set a budget, it's time to talk about how you can save money here by living cheaply. For cheap vegetables, you can go to a farmer's market. As I said in one of my other videos, farmer's markets are a really good option for getting fresh veggies, some produce, and also a great opportunity to support smaller farmers. And they usually have huge bargains. You will find lots of fresh produce for a cheaper price to what you find usually in a supermarket. The only thing with farmer's markets is that they are not widely available in every suburb like your regular supermarket. My advice is that if you don't have a market walking distance to your place or you don't have a car, I recommend going once, taking a big trolley or a bag, buying in bulk and then storing all this food in the freezer or cooking everything and making meals and then freezing them. For products that don't need to be super fresh, you have the option of going to Aldi. Aldi is a discount supermarket chain, a bit cheaper than regular supermarkets because they have their own branded products. So if you want a good bargain, Aldi is a good choice. Again, similar to the farmer's markets, I find that Aldi is not widely available in each Australian suburb. So if you have a car, go for it. But if you don't, maybe go and buy in bulk and store everything in the fridge or in your pantry. And another tip for getting cheap groceries, buy only discounted products or products that are on sale. That means if I want to buy a specific product, but I don't really need it right now, I'm going to wait until it's on sale and I'll buy them. That's another option. And remember that if you're struggling to afford food for whatever reason, the Australian government offers food assistance programs all across the country. These programs are called food banks and allow people who are struggling to access free food and meals. If you want to get cheap quality products, go to second-hand stores or op shops such as the Salvation Army, the Brotherhood of St. Lawrence, the Australian Red Cross. Australians love op shops. Most of my Australian friends are always buying second-hand items and as I showed you in the intro, most of my stuff, most of my appliances are second-hand. And the good thing about buying at op shops is that these places are usually run by charities. So it's a really good way of supporting them but also helping the environment because you're reusing products instead of letting them go to landfill. I leave you a link down below to opshop.org where you can find second-hand stores all across Australia. Other great alternative is to go online and check out websites like Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree or even Etsy. And the good thing as well is that if you have a piece of furniture that you want to give away, you can just put it up online and make money out of that. And then of course if you want to buy cheap new products, you can go to discount department stores such as Kmart, Big W, or target. But bear in mind that because they are cheaper, they might not last as long, but it always depends on the item. If you want to buy a good quality mattress, my first recommendation is to go to Koala or Ikea. I love Koala, it's so, so affordable and such good quality, so check them out. And if you love reading and you want to get cheap books, you can go to any of these stores that I just mentioned, but I'll tell you a secret. Many Australian cities and towns have little hidden street libraries. These are little libraries where people exchange books with their community for free. If you have a used book, you can go and leave it there for someone else to read and you can pick up one for yourself and then once you read it, you return it. I'll leave you the link down below to the street library website in Australia. You'll see a map where you can find all the different little libraries all across the country. 
If you want to get free stuff, such as old furniture that needs to be repaired or appliances, construction materials or a fence, go for a walk around your area and I bet that you will find all of these things. This is something that really caught my attention when I first came to Australia. People leave all the stuff that they no longer want on the street for a waste collection company to come pick it up or for other people to pick it up. This is very common practice in Australia. You usually walk down the street and if you see hard rubbish, you just pick it up and take it home. I need to clarify though, the rules for leaving hard rubbish are different depending on the council you live in. And if you want to pick something up, knock on the person's door and ask them if it's okay for you to pick up that item, just in case. If you want to get discounted services, check out sites like Groupon. These usually have discounted vouchers and services for all the things that you can imagine, such as a cheap meal at a restaurant, a cheap massage or discounts for the hairdresser. And if you love watching movies and going to the cinema, most mobile phone companies offer perks such as discounted movie tickets or free access to streaming services like Netflix or Amazon for a specific period of time. Cinemas here also have discounted tickets if you go on Tuesdays, so check that out. If you love going out, exploring different places and meeting new people, you can do all this for cheap as well. My first recommendation is to join meetup groups. You just need to download an app called Meetup or they have a website as well. You use filters based on your interests and you find all the meetup groups that you can imagine. There's a meetup group for everyone. You can go on hiking trips or a photography tour for free or a small fee. If you want to practice your English, you can go to free language exchange meetup groups. I used to go to these groups when I first came to Australia to practice my English and not only I learned a lot but I also met a lot of people who today they're really really good friends. If you like going on camping trips or playing sports, meetup groups are an amazing alternative as well. You can also join a university club or a sports club. Usually these clubs require members to pay a very small annual membership fee and then you have access to different activities all year round. My recommendation is to join Facebook groups or to talk to your university to see what are the different options. If you're an international student, you are at an advantage because you can get a concession card. This is a card that allows you to get discounted tickets for public transport, usually around half the price, or discounted tickets to go to exhibitions or events. Some hairdressers also offer 10% discounts to students, so take advantage of that. Hairdressers here in Australia are expensive. You can expect to pay between $30 and $100 plus for a haircut. And if you're a student, you may also be able to get discounted products in retail stores such as Harvey Norman or Apple. I want to be a student again. <laughs> If you're not a student and you don't have access to all these concessions and you want to save money when commuting to work or moving around the city, you have the alternative to get a secondhand bicycle at any of the secondhand stores that I just mentioned, or you can use public bicycle and scooters sharing systems. Usually these are available in almost every Australian state and they cost around 45 cents per minute. If you need a car to move around the city or for a really quick trip and you don't want to commit to buying a car and paying maintenance costs, etc. There is a car sharing company called Car Next Door. There is another one called Go Get, and their prices are much more affordable than car hire companies. Car Next Door or Go Get, they usually charge per hour and not per day. That's why they're really good for quick trips. However, if you want to go on a weekend trip, a regular car hire company, it's going to be a bit cheaper because you usually pay for the day. Bear in mind that if you are working in a professional job here in Australia, some companies also offer discounts for public transport to their employees. Have a chat to human resources because this is common practice. If you're an international student and you have OSHC health insurance cover, then you're an advantage again because you can access bulk billing or direct billing for medical services. What is bulk billing? This is when you go to a doctor and you don't pay for your consultation because your consultation fee is covered by your private health insurance provider. However, this is not always the case. So I recommend talking to your health insurance provider first or going online on the website to see what are the options 
options available. If you're an Australian citizen or a permanent resident, you have Medicare cover. You don't have to worry about it because Medicare covers all your bulk billing expenses. And if you need mental health support, remember that if you're a student or if you're working in a professional job, usually most institutes and workplaces offer access to free counseling services. So take advantage of that and use it. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Or if you're already living here and you have any other tips for the community to know on how to save money, please leave a comment below so we can all learn about that. And I'll see you next time. Ciao.